Hello everyone! My name is Jennifer, this is Steve, and Hello. this is part two of our live weekly event here at Coloring Bliss. And today we are going to do some coloring with these, our paint Posca pens. We have a link to them in the video description in case you get tempted by them and must have them. So we are going to have fun with them. Over on Facebook, we did part one today and we opened them all up. We talked about the different nib sizes. They have brush tips. They have 0 0.7, 0 0.9, even smaller than 0 0.7, even bigger than 0 0.9. We talked about how I've had two on my shelf for well over a year, maybe even two years these two that I have felt too scared or precious to even open up. So I opened them today and we are officially going to color and enjoy the Posca paint pens. We've got little Rose <laughs> <laughs> hanging out behind me. We have officially moved our RV. We are now in Southern Utah enjoying not the summery weather we expected down here in Southern Utah. It is rainy and cold, but we are glad to be back in Utah and we're kind of making our way back towards our home. Um, but we're here for a little while to visit more with family that we have here in this part of the country. So it's really fun to be here and the cell strength is a lot stronger right here where we're parked so we're able to stream from our rig which is really fun so glad to be with you um, Merry Christmas Happy Hanukkah all those great holidays and I have a new art for you to help you celebrate all those holidays I forgot to mention in the first hour that we have the Christmas countdown advent coloring calendar Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> but that's a free download that you can come and get and color a little something every day to celebrate and look forward to Christmas. So make sure you follow the link. It will take you over to Coloring Bliss. You can become at least a free member and get that free download and enjoy coloring a little something every day on our way towards Christmas. Now we also have another free download, a brand new piece of art that I just finished drawing um, just a couple days ago and then I have two, all this other art I'm going to show you right now um, before we start coloring with the Posca paint pens so let me switch the camera view and show you last year was my first time ever drawing anything for Hanukkah and I wanted to draw something else again this year for Hanukkah and so let me show you what I have created and that's uh, this one right here. So happy Hanukkah. I know we've got lots of people now in our community that celebrate Hanukkah. So this one I have created for all of you. So we have two now for all of you. Um, maybe I'll even draw another one. We'll see. Because like I was telling everybody on Facebook, I got to go to a craft store in Arizona. And they actually had a really good display of Hanukkah um celebration not just decorations but really neat um, they had menorahs they had all kinds of beautiful things that we don't get that kind of a display in the stores in utah there's just not enough of a demand for it i guess and so i really spent a lot of time looking around at that beautiful display so that was a lot of fun so this is what I created for all of you. You can come and get it. It's part of the premium library. If you've ever come over to Coloring Bliss, you know we have both free coloring pages and coloring pages that are part of the premium library. So whether you want to be free or a paid member, we've got stuff for both levels, whatever you want to do. Just come on over and you can learn about both. So this one's part of the premium library and I'm really excited about it. It says eight nights, eight lights. So I hope you enjoy this one. And then this one is a brand new piece of art that I just finished drawing a couple days ago and it is going to be free for a limited time and then it will go into the premium library and it says jingle all the way. It was inspired by those gorgeous wreaths that they sell that are totally made of all jingle bells. I love those wreaths. They're so heavy and beautiful the way they catch the light and every time you close the door they jingle and they're just so fun and I thought that would be so much fun to color. We could use every sparkly um, coloring tool we have and really go to town on all these jingle bells. So 
this is for all of you, my gift to all of you to come and download as a free gift and enjoy coloring some fun jingle bells and, and it'll be quiet. <laughs> Not like the real jingle bells that if you even touch it, they, they jingle, right? So that's for all of you to come and enjoy. And then the next one is um, all of you love the gnomes I draw and I haven't drawn any gnomes in so long so I wanted to do some Christmas gnomes and these are some caroling gnomes. We've got three little gnomes that are all bundled up and out enjoying some caroling so they're here for you to download. These are part of the premium library and we've got several other really fun gnomes if you like coloring gnomes. There's enough gnomes now that you could actually I think print an entire coloring book in the Coloring Bliss print shop. All of gnomes now. I was looking at that and there's a lot of gnomes there now so come and enjoy these little carolers. And then this one is based off of a really beautiful vintage Christmas card that I saw. It's back from the 50s. This has this cute little angel and she was holding um, some ribbons and ringing some bells. And I just fell in love with that little card. And so I did my version of it, um, did my own bells. And I kind of redrew her in my own fashion and made her singing. And I just think it's just adorable. I, I'm really excited to color her gown. I love, you know, I'm a girl. I like to color girl dresses. <laughs> so this one I think is just a really fun, happy, um, make a joyful sound kind of coloring page so i hope you enjoy it and um, enjoy coloring something that's inspired by a vintage christmas card and then we got one more here and it says joy and uh, the o is part of the little snowman and then i just wanted it to have a ton of snowflakes on it so you can like i said get out all your sparkly gel pens everything that is glittery and fun and color it up and have a really good time with this one here so and it was recommended back when we were over on facebook just a few minutes ago someone said how do you color things that are white now i know here on youtube i think either last winter or the winter before we did a video dedicated to how to color white objects and if it's interesting to all of you and you'd like me to sort of revisit that topic we could maybe do that next Wednesday or here really soon let me know comment below comment now would you like to do another little workshop another um, visitation on how to color things that are white because it can be tricky so let me know would that be interesting to you? So come and get the new coloring pages. And don't forget, we do have those two free ones that will go away at the end of the holiday. Jingle All the Way and the Christmas Advent Calendar that has something for you to color every day leading up to Christmas. So yay! <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like them. So we need to know which one you would like me to color tonight um, with our Posca paint pens. I don't think the snowman. Um, so either the girl, I think, or the gnome, maybe the gnomes, because they have lots of open spaces for the Posca paint pens. Are they good with the gnomes? Um, you guys let me know. Yeah, they think that would be great, the white. The white workshop? Yeah. Sammy's, no, do you mean a workshop or just a... I mean like, uh, um, a live event. We have, uh, it gets confusing because if you know anything about, um, Coloring Bliss, we have a level that's called the Bliss Partners. And if you become a Bliss Partner, you get to have a bonus event once a week. It's um, usually on Tuesday nights, although this week it's tomorrow night. So if you'd like to join us, tomorrow night we're going to be focusing on doing lettering. So like if you were to have a coloring page like these gnomes and maybe you wanted to add the word... Um, um, what? Sing until your voice goes dry. <laughs> That's a horrible saying. But let's say you had something you wanted to write on it and you didn't want to just, you know, use your normal handwriting that you use to make a grocery list. Um, that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow is how to add lettering to things and how I do it. 
Now we're not going to be doing like um, fancy cursive type lettering. It's more like how to take your own hand lettering and make it look more professional and how to use your own coloring supplies to do it. You don't necessarily have to go out and buy all the fancy um, brush lettering um, pens and markers and everything. You can just use your color pencils and get some gorgeous lettering out of just color pencils. So that's the workshop topic for tomorrow. So if you're interested in joining the partners and joining that workshop tomorrow, I highly recommend it. Just go visit Coloring Bliss and you can click on membership, I believe. Is it members? And they can learn about becoming a partner and you can join us for that workshop tomorrow. So it should be lots of fun. And okay. Melissa's names on the hats. Oh, I, I like the there. names on the hats. You could name each of the gnomes. That is a way cute, much better idea than my mm -hmm. idea. <laughs> That's a way better idea. <laughs> We've had mostly requests for gnomes and jingle bells. I think gnomes is winning slightly. Okay. Jingle bells is coming up though. Yeah. Jingle bells would be really fun. Oh, we could do some if we crack into these ones. Okay, so the other thing that has happened lately is Spectrum Noir sent me a package and um, I would really like to look at what they sent us and if we have time we could crack into them tonight. They sent me these sparkle glitter brush pens. Now I've had the clear one for quite a while, for a couple of years, and I use the clear one to add a little glitter on top of alcohol markers or color pencils, and it's been fantastic. Um, but Spectrum Noir wanted me to have a chance to try their colored versions as well. So they sent these, and these might be really good on the Jingle Bells. So we could try those on the Jingle Bells. And they also sent me their, um, oh I just, put my thumb into some of the Posca paint. They also sent me um, some of their Illustrator alcohol markers that have the brush tips. So those are the two things that Spectrum Noir sent me that we could look at as well. Um, but the Posca paint pens I bought because I've been wanting to try coloring with them for a long time. I love my white Posca paint pen. It is my favorite tool for adding highlights because my white gel pens fail me so often and I've tried every white gel pen I can get my hands on and all of them have failed me. But a white Posca paint pen has never failed me. It's always doing me a good job and this one has lasted me a really long time so I'm, I was really excited to try coloring with the Posca paint pens. So while we were over on Facebook we talked about the different nib sizes and, and all that good stuff and now we're going to play with the markers and see how they color. So here's a quick recap. We have two nib sizes that we're playing with. We've got a 0.7 and a 0.9, and that's the difference of how they color out. These are all the colors I have in the set that I got, and there's a link to that set. It takes you to Amazon, which is our storefront, and if you purchase using that link, we get a little kickback, and it doesn't cost you any extra, just so you know. But this is the set I have. It came with 12 colors plus this gold and the silver, which has a little shine to it. You can see it catch the light ever so often. And they are all 0.7. I do have a couple 0.9 purples that I've been hanging on to for a while, so that's what those purples come from. And then I also have this white here, which is a brush tip, which I don't use very often because the bristles are so long and so hard to control. It just doesn't work very well for my particular style of art and for when I like to use um, white. I, I like to have real control. I want that highlight to really go where I want it to go. Now it's interesting to me that these little blobs of paint still aren't dry. The streaks of paint are dry, but the blobs aren't. So I need to remember that as we're coloring, that the thicker the paint, the slower the dry time. So that's a good thing to remember as we go in to color a gnome. Let's color a gnome. Okay, we've got a couple, like this two greens would make a good blend, I think. So let's just go for the obvious. Green's good for Christmas obvious so let's do one of these hats with green and try to get some shading i mean i've never done this before let's see what happens anybody have some coloring tips for me <laughs> with <Posca laughs> paint pens we know they're very opaque 
That's number one, right? That's why we like them. They're very opaque. So it, like the little details in the hat, we might lose those. So um, you would want to pick your, your situation thoughtfully when you're going to use the Posca paint pen. So um, for instance, if I wanted to color, um, when would be a bad time to use it? Like on this wing here, if I colored the wing, of this angel, I would lose all those little details if I went over them with the Posca paint pen. So you would want to use it thoughtfully, or if I did go over it, I'd probably want to come back with a black liner to put those um, details back in. Okay, so here in this hat, if I'm going to color this whole hat, we are probably going to lose those black lines. We'll see. Just how opaque are they, Steve? I don't know. Let's find out. So. I'm trying to think. We've got a wet media. That means if we want to blend, we need to blend while it's still wet. So maybe if we have both caps off and probably want the shadow to feel like it's going like that. Okay. Wish me luck. <laughs> I'm not even going to practice. We're just going to dive in. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay. Stay away from the line. Jennifer's curious if the Spectrum Noir glitter pens are better than the Jelly Roll pens. Ah, uh, that's what I'm curious about too. How opaque are they? I don't think they're very opaque. Okay, so if we come over on top of this now and sort of, you know, follow the lines that the we're covering, only lay in dark green now, right? like that. Well, that's kind of cool. Okay. Well, it definitely lays down fast. Uh-oh. Kind of chewing up the paper. So again, remember Jennifer. I'm talking to myself, not the Jennifer who just made a comment. <laughs> <laughs> This is a wet media and we're not working on watercolor paper. So wet, anytime you have a wet media onto regular paper, if you work that wet media into that paper too long, it's gonna cause pilling, right? It's gonna make the paper fibers swell and then the more you work on the fibers, the more it pulls them up and you get a, kind of a mess, right? So I don't wanna, I should, I did too much scribbling back and forth in here so i need to be more light-handed somebody else on facebook did mention that they were water-based that they had looked uh -huh. it up and then, since they are water-based which would make sense why people probably had mixed results coloring with those yeah because it, it's causing the pilling the pilling and then also probably streaking yeah we'll see if it causes streaking the artists i follow on youtube that color with them they like them because of the solid blocks of color they can achieve. But they're not exactly doing what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just winging it though, so we're just seeing what it can do, right? We're testing here and learning as we go. So I'm trying to be more light-handed now. Less scratching on the paper, more just trying to get the color down. I know you were wondering if you should grab a brush. Yeah. Um, Is someone suggesting that? Yeah, Jennifer's wondering about using a brush. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering how fast I'm going to go through these pens at this rate. Adriana loves wet media, so she says she loves ordering her books and stuff on our, mm -hmm. when she orders from us, she gets the watercolor paper. Yeah, I'm kind of regretting having Steve print this on um, the mixed media paper instead of the watercolor paper, but that's all right. Well, that's what most people would experience, so that's good for you to know. Yeah, I wouldn't have known if we hadn't done it this way. It is very opaque. You can't see those lines. It does sound pretty scratchy. It's very scratchy. Yeah, Dennis says you need medium points. I don't like that fine point. Interesting. Okay, so I've got those um, 0.9 um, points in purple. So maybe we'll do the girl's hat in purple or something here in a second as soon as I because this is taking a long time in this tiny little nib. 
uh, what if I got messy? Let's see what happens if you lay down some wet and then smear. I'm not afraid to get messy. Will that work better? Tell me about your smear. Oh, that smear is really good. Did you see that? Okay, if you lay down some and then smear it, look at that smear. That's a good smear and it's less um, opaque when you do the smear. You can still see the line of the line art underneath it. That's well, interesting. Just saying that's what she's found successful too, is just going in one direction, brushing it. Or... Yeah, that smear is interesting. Oh, that would be pretty on a Christmas tree if you're coloring a Christmas tree. So you're coloring it kind of like you would with a gel pen then. Yeah. This will use less of the ink and be less harsh on the paper. Oh, I like that. Kind of has a soft, almost pastel look. I wonder how long it's going to be on my finger though. Carolyn's wondering if they'll work with glycerin. So many questions. <laughs> <laughs> if it's water based, then we have a good chance that glycerin is going to be its friend, right? Anything water based plays pretty well with glycerin. This is interesting. The smear is really satisfying. <laughs> Angela says, LOL, Jennifer loves the smear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a smear girl. Okay. I kind of want the top of his hat to be more light green except the underside. Oh, I got green on the outside. That was bound to happen, huh? I need to get out something that smears more accurately. <laughs> How's that for a sentence? <laughs> I need something that smears more accurately. Yeah. That would be a Spatula good tipper. that would be a good quote for one of our red bubble t-shirts. Don't forget everybody, we've got some really great red bubble products now and some of them have my my silly quotes. I think we have a smear quote, don't we have a well, smear? <laughs> We were the talking, we oh, wanted, we, we were going to do a smear quote, but then we the were, smear. we were worried that it's kind of sounded like a smear. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, should we do embrace the smear? Cause then it sounds like I'm trying to tell everybody to go get their yearly pap smear. <laughs> 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 and only if you knew me and my coloring techniques, would you understand what we were talking about? <laughs> So I, I think we chose not to do that one. But we did do um, There Are No Mistakes in Coloring, which I tell you guys that all the time. So that one is there if you want that one. On like a mug, you could have all your Posca paint pens in that one. And then when you do your your oops smear like I just did, you can read the mug and remind you, oh, Jennifer says that's not a mistake. So. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay anyway so there's the green so we learned smearing works well but I'm not sure how well that's going to come off my hands we know gel pen will come off within one to two normal hand lots washings of, lots of laughing about the smear <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe that would become the best seller because really? only we would know what we're talking about <laughs> And we could all wear it to our next yearly appointment. <laughs> you'd, win, you'd win some Women's Health Award or something. For <laughs> oh, that would be hilarious to wear it to your next OBGYN appointment. Oh, that would be really funny. Oh, that's too funny. Okay, so let's try the purples now and see what they do if I enjoy coloring with them better because it's a bigger nib. This is, I'll show you the nib size difference. So here is what the point nine looks like, and here is um, a same, well, it's not the same purple, but it's close, in the point seven. I've got paint everywhere. Oh my goodness. This is going to be quite the cleanup process after this. We've got paint everywhere. Okay, so here is 
right here. That's what the 0.7 millimeter looks like. That's what the 0.9 millimeter looks like. So you can see the 0.9 is way more rounded and the 0.7 is much more triangular with a real point, which is <clears throat> perfect for getting that tiny little white highlight that I love getting on my coloring. So that's why I love this little 0.7 millimeter white for my highlights. But am I going to wish I had all these colors in a 0.9? Maybe as I'm going along, I'm going to want to upgrade. My white table has paint all over it now. Oh no! <laughs> Does, doesn't it? Mm, well, we might be trying to use odorless mineral spirits to clean my... <laughs> oh, well. That's what paint's for, right? Tables are for, right? Julia said you could cover the mistake with the white paint. Yeah, <coughs> yeah <laughs> that's what I was thinking, too. In fact, maybe we'll use the brush tip that I never use. And see, see, it's all kind of... It won't even shake anymore. It's getting too old, I think. Let's see if I can get it to do... Oh, yeah. For these ones... For the brush tip ones they have a pump on the end because you can't you know push the tip to get the paint charged um, so here is on the side the instructions of how these ones work the brush tip ones and then you just push the end and that forces the paint down into the bristles you can see the big pool of paint oh, maybe you can't but it pushes the paint down into the bristles and then we should be able to um, fix our little oops. So, okay, now we'll let that dry and hopefully I won't stick my hand in it. But judging by how this evening is going, I will stick my hand in it. <laughs> There's paint everywhere, you guys. <laughs> Literally paint everywhere. Mishka just left. He's like, no. My cat, he's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> There's paint going everywhere. Okay, we were gonna color with the 0.9, and I've got two purples, one that's a little more blue violet and one that's a little more red violet. So, um, I don't know what we're gonna do. Well, let's go for this one here, since we've got two that I think are the same color. All right, this table had no chance, did it, with this project. Okay, let's see if this one colors better. I love how opaque they are. Now I know people use these for painting on rocks. The paint pens. Um, because Sharpies are a bad idea for rock painting because they are not light fast. Sharpies are not light fast. So you do all that work painting your rocks and then um, they fade. They fade. You go back to where you put them out in the sunshine and they are all faded. I'm, I was just thinking, I wonder if we could use a little white in the middle and get more of a like a lilac color in the middle of this hat. Should we try it? Okay, okay this is definitely coloring easier, which makes sense because we're working with a bigger nib and I just made another mistake. It's not a mistake, another oops that we can easily fix. Okay, now we're gonna grab this, paint a little white into the middle and see, yeah. I don't know if I smear now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See, I'm so professional I'm using a different finger for purple. <laughs> That's how professionals wow. paint with Posca pens. Well, uh, thank you, Jack. Jack just donated this. Oh, case. thank you. A donation will go towards extra soap for my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks really pretty. It looks like, it totally looks like pastels. The way it, it smears out. It's yeah. so satisfying. Jack says Merry Christmas. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Merry Christmas to you, too. 
Okay, I like that look with the little bit of white. That'll be a good way to use up this paint in this white. That's really pretty. Yeah, you're getting some really interesting, what would you call them, patterns or? Yeah. Oh, look how pretty that is. Interesting smudges or whatever. Yes, I feel I like so, that. so, what's the word when you do like interpretive things? Abstract. Abstract, yes, I feel so abstract. Hmm. Oh, I wish I'd done more of it down here. Yeah, I'm just going to go for it. So, a paintbrush, do you think? Well, my like problem a, is, is I only brought my good water uh, brushes with us I, I here mean, in the you, rig. If you were to do it again and you had what you wanted, do you think you'd be trying a paintbrush? I'd be trying, your finger? yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And a lot of people aren't going to want to be using their finger. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, no, you don't mind, but it would drive me crazy. <laughs> yeah, Steve wouldn't be doing this with his fingers. Oh, Tika had a good idea. Maybe try a Q-tip? Yeah, a Q-tip. Do you want me to go get you one? No, I'm all right. I'm already up to my elbows in paint, so at this point it's a lost cause. <laughs> We'll see. Oh, Jean just says she just became a colorist. I love your pages. Awesome. I color them and take them to my mom, who is in a dementia hospital. Mm. She loves the pictures. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for your support as a colorist. And I bet she loves them. Um, I'm sorry to hear your mom has that problem. We've got family that has that same issue, so I know the struggle is sad. Art is a really good help for that kind of issue that's for sure um adriana wondered if the purple will come off the white nib wow that is really pretty i love yeah, that yeah this is really satisfying have to see at the end if it, if, you, if it's just permanently stained if it causes an issue or well, what you know look at it's like hardly any purple on there at all i think you could clean it off pretty easy this is very interesting. We are learning a lot together tonight as I just bravely go where no crazy colorist has gone before. <laughs> okay, am I still in the shot? Good. Of course, often I worry that I'm not in the shot for all of you. Okay, let's lay down quite a lot of the white here. I feel like the purple, if anything, is the one getting gummed up. I wonder what's going on. I think we need to take a peek at that purple nib and see what's going on. Let's see, it's kind of got some gunk on it. I don't know if it's paint or if it's the pilling of the paper. So we're going to try to clean it off here. and prime it again a couple pumps onto the paper to get some fresh paint down in and I think I'll give it a couple shakes two shakes of a lamb's tail yes <laughs> <laughs> okay so we've primed some fresh paint down into the nib Adriana says that's why we want you Jennifer you try and learn for us <laughs> Yeah, then you don't have to ruin your own nibs, right? <laughs> That's my my goal. I don't want you to be the one trying something and being like, ah, I just ruined everything. Okay. Oh, that's better. Now we're flowing. Okay. So that's a good thing we just learned, that maybe ever so often you want to stop and reprime your... Oh, I just got purple everywhere because we're getting into this really narrow zone here okay so how can I more effectively with my big fingers get in there um, because I won't let my husband go get a q-tip <laughs> oh dear 
how about if I put a little purple down and then use the brush to spread it oh see I'm just so pleased with that now let's get a little more white down in here soften that up because that harsh purple down here is looks out of place now what Mishka you want to say Merry Christmas to everybody yeah you what else you want to tell everybody you want to tell them that you haven't been fed yeah <laughs> all right well I, I think now I've learned what my favorite technique is and that's definitely the smear surprise surprise let's lighten this up a bit too it sure dries fast um, when it's a second layer on top it's drying really fast so beware of that let's try adding a little highlight on the top we'll pretend the lights coming this way and add a highlight and see how that does I think it's gonna need that never does anyway now it just looks messier it needs to be more dark white for it to look intentional okay we'll let that dry for a second all right that was cool okay that was fun all right I'm definitely gonna be playing more with my Posca pens because that and I'm gonna smear a lot smearing is going to be the thing that was lots of fun but I would like to see what those um, glitter pens are like so let's put the Posca pens to the side unless there's any other questions about the Posca pens I think we have decided that they are a win um, they are a bit pricey um, remember you can go to your local like Michaels and they have a, it's called craft smart is the brand and they have acrylic paint pens that you can buy and you could start there and play around with those paint pens and see if you like um, just um, painting with a paint pen and if you like that process at all before you splurge and buy the Posca paint pens but it sounds like they might be a different type of paint um, and then the nib sizes will be the other variable in all of that so just keep that in mind so I'm gonna drop all of these in here so we don't get more paint everywhere than what we absolutely have to and well, my hands are dry at least so let's try on the jingle bells the sparkle pens by spectrum noir so like i said these were gifted to me by spectrum noir every time a company sends me anything just so you know i always have a very open and frank conversation with them and tell them that i'm always going to be very honest with my audience I always tell them I'm going to tell them that you gave them to me and I'm going to tell them my honest opinion about the product so you can be um, confident that as I try products from companies that you will always get my honest opinion and they're always good about it if I ever have a company that tells me they want me to say something in particular I usually not usually I always tell them no because um, I just don't want to be that kind of a reviewer. I want you guys to always trust me. Okay, so this is the first pack. This is the Vintage Tones pack. <coughs> Excuse me. Adriana asked, how should you store them so the nibs don't clog? My Posca paint pens at home um, have always been on their side. I wonder if that's why they were so hard to prime. I don't know how to store um, Posca pens. My white one that I use all the time is being used all the time. So did it's... You throw this one down here? I didn't. Oh. <laughs> this one, which I use all the time, is, is always being brought in and out of cases and stuff. It's, it gets used, you know, 10 times a week. So it's never sitting still. So I don't know the proper answer to that question. Um, that's a really good question. I don't have an answer. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so these pens, the way they work, 
I've got two sets, the vintage tones that we're going to swatch out, and I have the glitz and glamour, which has three pens in it. And um, the way these work, let's see, it says, give your creative projects some extra sparkle with these fabulous glitter pens. Each has fine, flexible brush for accurate, mess-free application, perfect for coloring, embellishing, writing, accenting, and more. Okay, I'm trying to see if they have any other information we need to know on the box. Oh, there's a paper in here. Last time I did this, I didn't read the directions well enough. And we had that whole fiasco with the collar on them. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Yeah. Remove yellow retainer ring. Twist nib section clockwise to engage the cartridge. Replace cap and shake well. Hold pen upright. Squeeze until ink appears. Wait a few seconds until brush is fully primed. Okay. Let's follow the instructions this time. <laughs> and we'll start with purple. Okay. So this is the color they're talking about right here. That's where we made the mistake last time we did a pen like this. I believe it was the Jane Davenport. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, and I was really, that was a really sad day. So all you have to do is remove that color. <laughs> I didn't know that and I didn't read the instructions. So yeah. Okay. Then twist the nib section clockwise to engage clockwise. This is the way a clock works. I wonder if the millennials won't know which way clockwise is because they can't read an analog clock clock. <laughs> I just funny. thought of that. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's take a peek before we do it. This is a sealed cartridge. So this is sealed. So I'm assuming there's a, a some sort of a needly type thing on this end. And we're gonna put it on here and twist and it's going to puncture. Let's listen. Yeah, it punctured. So now we're in and it's just twisting freely now. Okay. Now it says replace cap and shake well. Oh. By the way, with Poskets, it ah. sounds like people have had bad experiences, but you don't want to store a nib down. Okay. So fill with paint. Oh, that makes sense. And Adriana heard you probably that even storing them horizontally isn't always good. So. Okay. Okay, so we've got this cap on. Now we've got this on tight. Okay, so it's a basic brush paint pen. Okay, then we want to replace the cap. And I think that's wise because if the paint flows freelier than what you expect, you're going to have paint going everywhere when you shake. Huh. Hold pen upright. Squ um, hold pen upright. So are they and like, shake well. Are they like Jane Davenport Mermaid pen? Yeah. Oh. Okay, shaking well. Deanna says keep the clips, Jennifer, so that they don't leak. Oh. And uh, Crystal says Posca pens are stored like markers on their side. Okay. Others are saying that, yeah, these should be stored on their side. These ones here? Water brush pens, yeah. Okay. Okay, then it says hold pen upright, squeeze until ink appears. Now, okay, good. There's no glue on the bristles. Remember, if you ever get one of these pens or any kind of brush and you touch the bristles, they feel like they've been glued together. Don't break that glue off. You want to take it to your sink with some warm water and it'll just kind of melt off. If you break that glue off, it can actually harm the, your bristles. I learned that the hard way, so um, don't just break that glue off. Okay, now it's saying to hold pen upright, squeeze until ink appears. So right here there's a word that says push right there. So we're going to push right there. This is really weird. I would think you'd hold it pen nib down, but it says hold it upright, squeeze until ink appears. This seems really wrong. Oh, I can see the stuff starting to move up into this chamber here. It seems really wrong, but I, I'm going to trust you, Spectrum Noir. If this goes everywhere, then I'm calling Spectrum Noir tonight. <laughs> Not that I have a phone number that they would answer in the middle of the night. 
This seems really wrong. Can I set it going? If this, if this fountain's everywhere. Okay, it's going up into the bristles now. Can you see? I'm going to put it right here so if it goes up, it's going to get you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get them. That'll get them. This seems really wrong. So that's what it says to do. Huh? That's what it says to do. Hold upright. Hold pen upright. Squeeze until ink appears. Well, it's appearing. I'm not doing it anymore. That makes me really nervous. Okay, wait a few seconds until brush is fully primed. Okay. All right, so we're just going to wait a few seconds. Melody says, don't overfill chamber. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm just following their rules, Melody. I don't know. Are we all going to be calling Spectrum Noir tomorrow? <laughs> she followed your instructions. Okay, let's go ahead and color one of these jingle bells and see what it does. Let's test it first on your test page. No, we're, we're diving straight in, man. Ooh, living on the edge. We're living on the edge. Okay. <laughs> so this is um, the purple. I assume it's fig. This one right here, fig. Okay, here we go. Well, that was anticlimactic. Carla asked, will arthritic folks be able to squeeze those pens? That was some serious squeezing I had to just do. You may want to do it when your niece or nephew is over. <laughs> Let it get them messy if it Yeah, squirts. if it, <laughs> if it um, geysers on them. I think it's going to, the mess is going to start. We're just convinced that we're going to have a problem. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's starting to flow better. At first it was really like, and I'm, I'm really messy. Oh my word. I'm so messy, you guys. And it's really dark. I was expecting, um, well, Carolyn mentioned that. In fact, earlier she mentioned that hers are really dark and she was wondering if you could figure out a way to lighten them. Yeah, this is really dark, like marker dark. Not I would thought we were going to have more of a... This is not like what I was expecting at all. Very pigmented. I'm excited to see how much glitter we have here. Like, I'm really... This is messy, you guys. I'm sorry. Okay, but that doesn't matter. We're, we're going to see how glittery it is. Now. Oh, wow. Okay, let's see if I can catch the glitter. It's a different kind of glitter than a gel pen glitter. It almost seems frosted. Like, can you see the glitter? It's so pretty, but it's oh, yeah, that is pretty. really different than glitter in a gel pen. Oh, yeah. It is really fine. Or something yeah like. but it's very different okay let's try another one uh, I'm gonna do Which one looks the lightest you yeah do let's do one this one this is I believe biscuit Mia Bear says they look more glittery after they dry oh okay good we'll let um, this one I'm gonna write the name of it next to it now Melinda did say that she has uh, arthritis and has no issues squeezing these pens. Okay, good. Maybe it was just me. <laughs> there are a couple people who said it's like Queen Costella. Oh yeah, that kind of glitter. Yeah, you're right. And I don't have any of those with me. They're back in my art studio, so we can't compare. I'm sorry. Oh, there was the pop. Okay, pull that cap off. Make sure we've got this all the way down. Had a couple people mention they really like the clear. Yeah, the clear, I'll do a sample of the clear too. I, I use the clear on top of a lot of things. I kind of prefer the clear, oh, we did a clear test recently, didn't we? Um, I can't remember what the verdict was. I, I really don't know if I like this, squeezing this. Oh, this one's squeezing easier. I really don't like this upright thing. Melody says, I feel like I don't have very much control with these. Prefer Wink of Stella. Yeah, like I was pretty messy there. And it's the long bristles. That's why. 
long bristles are just what you're imagining. They have um, lots of floppy flowiness going on. So maybe it's a, a certain situation they would be ideal for. But if you're doing like in a situation like this where you want real specific um, parameters that the ink is going to go into, then maybe a pen nib would be much more controllable. Yeah, Star likes to color with uh, marker and then color over it with the clear. Mm -hmm. uh, Mia Bear says she has both uh, Wink of Stella and uh, this one, Spectrum Noir, in, in clear and likes the Spectrum Noir better. Very good to know. Okay, so we're going to let Biscuit sit here for a second and finish priming. Okay, now uh, let's get, I'm assuming this one is Peony. So listen for the click. Oh, that was really mild, the little click sound. Okay, now we'll prime it in. Maybe I'm just wimpy. I know I am really wimpy. I'm, my hands have gotten more and more wimpy lately. This one really doesn't want to prime. Is it because the, ah, oh, the bristles were a little bit gluey. That could be why. Will you take that into the sink and just gently rinse those bristles with a little warm water? That would be awesome. Okay, this one is Sage. Sometimes the glue can prevent the um, the ink from flowing up. This one's got glue on it too, so I'm going to have him clean that one as well. Trade. Thank you. Oh yeah, see, it started moving up as soon as he um, cleaned it. Are these water-based? I believe so. Okay, so we'll let that sit now. Okay, and let's see if this one needs priming, I mean washing too. Yep, sorry, making you work tonight. This one, I believe, is Macaroon. Macaroon, what fun names. Really fun names. Let's see. Yep, that one's got a little glue in it, too. Not as much as the others, though. Trade. Okay, let's prime this one up. Come on. Nothing. Why aren't you priming? What am I doing wrong, everybody? Thank you. Nothing. What am I doing wrong? <clears throat> Mia Bear likes the pots better. They sell little pots or something, she was saying. Oh. Okay, those three won't prime. I take it my, to the sink. my thumbs are officially hurting now. <laughs> Art supplies aren't supposed to hurt. No. <clears throat> I'll get a paper towel. Let's see. These ones are aquamarine, amethyst, and pink garnet. Art supplies aren't supposed to hurt. Hopefully, I don't squirt them everywhere. Yeah, be gentle. Steve's taking his life into his hands here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need is a man covered in glitter. I didn't shake him. Oh, do you think maybe that's why? Maybe it's my fault. Oh, Suzanne just said that.
Robin's also wondering if it's because the bristles are wet. I would think the water would help. Okay, that one needs, this one needs water. Oh yeah, as soon as I shook it, now it's already in there. Yeah, it was my fault. I didn't shake them. And I think it might be is it coming out into the... I think it's okay. Right. Yeah, these all need water too, so we don't break the bristles. I feel a cat at my feet again. Yeah, all three of these need a little bit of water, love. And now I will be a good girl and shake these. Wow, this is so complicated. Follow the instructions, everyone, if you get these. Okay, now we'll try priming again. Ah, that shaking step was so necessary. Makes sense. Okay, now we'll let that sit. So what's the order it says to do it? <laughs> this is so complicated. One, remove the collar. Two, you twist it down in. Okay. Then you take the cap off and, it, and then I suggest washing the bristles. And then you put the cap back on, shake it. Then hold the pen upright. So now we're at the shake part. And it does say upright, so upright. you would think that, yeah, that's bristles yep. up, I would assume. Yeah, so then you shake, then you take the cap off and hold it upright like this, squeeze to prime it, and it says you watch the ink go in, and then it says until the ink appears. Okay, so I'm priming it till I see the ink kind of reaching up there a little bit. And then it says, um, squeeze until ink appears and then wait a few seconds until the brush is fully primed. So you said these are water-based or alcohol? <laughs> I think they're water-based. We need to smell. Okay. This is so complicated. <laughs> Good thing they include instructions. This is what the instructions look like, in case you're wondering. There's just a little loose card inside the box, so look for your instructions. This is the clear one right here that I've had for ages. So mine's lasted a really long time because it doesn't take oh, yeah. much. It like fills it and you shake it after. Yeah. Didn't even have to prime it. Okay. So that, that was this one, Pink Garnet. Amethyst and Aquamarine. That's these three. Okay, so let me show you the clear one. That's this one here, which looks like it needs just a wee bit of cleaning. And we'll push a little bit of ink up into it here. Okay, and we'll see. I'll just lay some down right here over this whole thing. Now I have had this stuff activate some things. I've laid it over stuff and it moves some of the color below once in a while. So yeah, just be aware of they're that. They're confirming they're water-based. Okay, good. Yeah, so that probably is by having that water on the tip. That's probably what helped it. Prime it up a bit. Yeah, just shake it and you didn't even have yep. to prime it. Okay, so that's the clear. Um, Obviously, it's clear right now. We're going to let it dry down, and then I'll show you what the sparkle does. And can you see the sparkle of that first purple one yet that's been sitting here? It's totally dry now. Um, let me see if I can catch it in the light. It's not catching in the light. The clear one's catching in the light. Well, that's a really pretty purple now that it's dried a bit. Yeah. But the glitter... Let's see, that's where I can see oh, it. Oh yeah, I just caught it. Come on, catch it. Ugh, it's not catching. Okay, let's do another color and see if it will catch. Okay, let's see, this has been sitting for a while. Let's see how it primed. Does it have the color name on it anywhere? No, Spectrum Noir, you're usually so good with that. You didn't say it on the little blue thing or the strip. No. Okay. Yeah, it does on here. Where? Teacup, right there. What? Don't look Spring on the back. Sparkle. Biscuit, it does. I knew. Spectrum Noir is so good at naming their things. Okay, so this is Biscuit. 
I'm not going to be as particular this time. I'm just going to lay it on because um, we got to get these colors down so you guys can see them. This is Biscuit. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. This is Teacup. Oh, I love that the names are on. Okay, now that one didn't prime up. Did we shake that one? Oh, let's shake it now. Here, I'll shake these just to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that hurts my Take wrist. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, now it moved it right up into the bristles. Steve, you're amazing. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Lots coming out. It's a waterfall of teacup. <laughs> We got lots of teacup going on. Okay, that was teacup. Now this is macaroon. Okay, we're going to come over here and do macaroon over here. Pretty color, yep, lots coming out now. Okay, so if you wanted to down the color, I would assume you could put it onto a non-porous palette like the tray it's in you could put a little puddle of it you could add probably a little glycerin or water to it and then paint it out onto the thing you're coloring and that would water down the color could you mix it with the clear maybe yeah probably so okay this is peony these are all very oh that's very vintage that's the color palette of this box it's very vintage Vintage tends to feel um, like it's got gray or undertones of brown mixed in. So all these colors kind of have that feel to it. Okay, here is sage. Pretty color. Ooh. So yeah, the, the tips will be hard to control. Um, you can see when I'm just doing a circle, I'm much more successful than when I was trying to get around the, the little slits in the jingle bell. So um, choose where you use these um, wisely so you're successful at them. I'm not sure where the, aha, there's the one. Okay, now these are the three from this kit, the Glitz and Glamour kit. So let's see what these three look like. Make sure we shook these babies. Okay, so we should have a different feel because this was vintage and now we're moving into a different feel. This one is amethyst. Let's do these three over here. Oh, I am a purple girl. And they do, like, if you go a second time over or something, it does deepen up the color. So that's cool. You can do just one layer and get one color. Do a second layer to deepen it up. This one is aquamarine. Let's do that one right. Oh, that one is not primed all the way. <laughs> That's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> there, huh? Fixes it. Oh, we're swimming in aquamarine now. Okay. And the last one is pink garnet. Okay, we'll do pink garnet up here. That's a nice big one. Spectrum Noir has always been really good at um, putting together groups of colors. They do it with their color pencils. Um, and now they've done it with these. Like these vintage ones feel like they all belong together. Oh, yeah. These ones feel like they belong together. Yeah. They, they're really good at that, putting families together of colors. Okay, so that's these. 
now you kind of get a feel for these tools. Um, do I like them better than gel pens? I think they have a place. Gel pens, I think, are easier to control. Um, I'm going to have to play with these more and see, you know, what situations would you use these in? They might be really good for like washing an entire area and then coming in with gel pens on top to add even more details. That might be a perfect way to use them because the brush is so big and floppy to do any detail work might be frustrating. But to like lay down a whole background and then come in with details on top with a gel pen, that might be the best way to do it. Then you can get kind of a painterly effect with the bristles, that nice sparkle and gleam in the back, and then come in with your real details with your pens and your pencils and you're not like frustrated by trying to control those bristles. Yeah, Adriana and uh, Mia Bear are loving those last three colors. Yeah, those oh, are... Oh, it's fun. I just caught, a, caught the Oh, they're, they're catching it now. Now you can see them sparkle on the camera. Okay, good. I was worried you wouldn't see them. It is a very different sparkle than gel pens. It's very... Um, a micro glitter is the best way I would rec say. And it's... I think it's mostly silver glitter. Would you guys, those of you who have them, would you say that's what you would see? Are you seeing all silver glitter? Sometimes these glitters have bits of color in them, you know, like um, some of the gel pens I have, it'll be a clear gel pen, but it has like a rainbowy glitter in them. This one I'm getting almost all silver glitter. That's all I'm seeing. Like sometimes a gel pen will be like a pink color with pink glitter. This seems like all the same color glitter across all of them. It's all a silvery glitter. So, so you kind of know what you're getting with it. Um, it didn't, it kind of bled through. We got a bit of a shadow right there. Um, but it's a water-based, very wet, so that makes sense. This is a very thick um, cardstock, so um, keep that in mind. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. That, I would tell that you. That clear is going to be, you know, when you were talking about coloring with white. Yeah. Um, it would be pretty on snow. Yeah, on mm -hmm. snow. Yep. Yep. It would be very pretty for the snowman on the joy. Me of that how snow will pick up the Right here, you could do that sparkles. whole snowman on. Yeah, yeah, that would be really neat. Or you could do the whole snowman and then come in with other types of gel pens with, like, the, like I said, there's those silvery, more um, silver type clear gel pens so you could wash the whole snowman in that one and then come in with different shades of clear that would be really neat yeah angela says sand glitter uh, jennifer finer more subtle yeah suzanne says they look like frost yeah frost is a good word too yeah yeah most definitely silver glitter yeah so it's really neat really yeah, neat. it really is i really like them yeah, and I like, again, I like that they're grouping them in families. So if you could only afford one set, I think you'd be happy that, um, like, if you're really into vintage colors, I think you'd be happy with just the vintage set. Um, like I said, Spectrum Noir is really good at grouping colors together. So if all you can afford is one thing and you can't buy the full set, you would be happy with just the vintage set or just one group and then you could play to your heart's content with them and you would be content with that i think until your full set syndrome kicks in and you have to have them all right <laughs> so yeah so that's the things i like um one they have good thoughtful sets that's really smart and then i think they would make for really good washes in the background and then come in with more details on top i think that would be the way i would recommend using them so that's really fun they dry relatively fast too oh we should see if the glitter comes off let's see yeah the glitter comes off but that's pretty typical even with a good gel pen the glitter will come off i was kind of hoping to say no it doesn't come off it's a miracle but that's pretty typical that the glitter will come off. The only way to Even prevent... After it dries? Yeah, but that's normal. I was just telling them that. Um, the only way to really prevent glitter from coming off is to seal your artwork. 
um, even with gel pens if if you never want that glitter to come off then you have to seal your artwork I don't know if you guys knew that so um, I, I just thought I would test it <laughs> they're laughing at Mishka it's confusing <laughs> Catherine's cats oh <laughs> yeah I bet Where is that cat? all right so we had a chance to try Posca paint pens Mishka and the sparkle glittered we didn't have a chance to try um the illustrator pens that um spectrum noir sent me so we'll have to try that another time so thank you spectrum noir for letting us all experience those um i think steve's bringing mishka over so you guys can see him <laughs> our come giant cat and come and say show. hi come here Oh, see if he'll bite me. Oh, he's gonna he's bite He's gonna you. bite me. Like, I don't want to be a <laughs> This is Mishka. He doesn't want to like be in show business. A fourth of him. Oh, now he's purring. <laughs> <laughs> see if I can get him on the table. He gets on the table all the time at night. Look how huge he is. <laughs> he's so huge. And, and he, this is a normal size. He's a Siberian cat. Huh, you're not gonna bite my face, are you? maybe he says <laughs> he's such a cat he's just full cat he's not like you know he'll be like oh they're your friend and loving you one minute and then bites you the next minute <laughs> he's just such a cat anyway we love him he's a character so he's been doing really good with traveling um he we have a crate for him in our truck um, but this last trip, he was actually very content to sit next to Carter when we were on this nice long straight stretch where he was safe. He was very content. And then we put him in the crate whenever we feel nervous or he has to be contained and safe. He's inside his crate, so it works out really well. <laughs> but he is all cat, man. It's really interesting to have a dog who is so obedient and listens to you and wants to please you in any way possible versus a cat who could just cares less like it's all about him right <laughs> <laughs> like he wants you to please him and so it's fun to have both to see their yeah, personalities it's really fun peggy donated she says thanks oh, for a wonderful presentation you are both wonderful merry christmas oh thank you so much peggy <laughs> you, merry peggy. christmas to you too you guys are also fantastic. I'm so glad that the stream worked tonight. Let me know, comment below, how did it work for you? Was the audio good? Was the lighting good? Um, the quality, was it good? Um, I'd love to know your feedback. I think this was our first real successful stream from the rig, so I am elated that it worked because this has been my dream to be able to start traveling. I'm hoping that as we get better at this traveling and better at um, streaming from the rig, that hopefully we can start meeting up with some of you that we can say we're going to be in whatever town. I don't know. I can't even think of a town name right now, but and then we can say we would love to meet up with you and we can actually in real life meet and do some coloring together and that's my dream so that's what we're working towards it just takes a lot of work there's so much to figure out um, the tech of it the the learning the rig how to do the the water heater how to do the hitching and then how to drive this huge thing down the road so much to learn it's taking way more time than we thought plus we're also doing so much good service for our family service we haven't been able to do um, in years because of my health and so it, it's just a big process and a big dream and I'm glad I get to bring you along with us so it's amazing don't forget to check out Redbubble see the products we're um, selling there also don't forget to come and get the free holiday coloring pages that I have there for you as a gift from us to you and we'll be back again next Wednesday and if you'd like to join the partners and all of us um, tomorrow night we're going to be getting together for a workshop and we're going to be doing lettering my version of lettering if you like my style of teaching and you like how I teach kind of more basic but also um, in depth um, from our perspective colorist perspective then you'll love our workshops and I highly recommend you come and join us tomorrow night so we'll be doing lots of fun lettering and enjoying how to um, make your own handwriting come out and look professional and even better than you can expect it to so that's be tomorrow night so come and join us if you'd like just visit coloringbliss.com and you can learn all about becoming a partner. 
So lots of links in the video description to learn about all of that. And thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful, colorful, blissful night. Bye-bye everyone.